Good day, everybody. I am meteorologist Patrick Pete back again with another episode of Charm City Classroom. Of course, today I am Professor Pete, and I have an interesting topic to talk to you about. It's actually two topics we're going to kind of merge into one. We're going to talk about bow echoes, which you hear us talk about during severe weather events, and derechos, which is something that we don't speak about often, but it's definitely something that's very intriguing, and the two are kind of related. So let's jump right on into it, starting with our first slide. Uh, basically, we want to talk about the environment here. Scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, developing in a very warm, humid, moist environment. And they will continue to advance. And as they do, sometimes they become more linear. So you start to see a line of these thunderstorms developing. And more times than not, they're a severe warrant for their winds, the winds in excess of 58 miles per hour. Now, you have winds in front and you have winds behind the storms. And sometimes, and more oftentimes than not, the winds behind the storm on the backside get stronger than the winds ahead of the storm. And then that's whenever you start to see a little bit of bending, a little bit of what we call bowing out. That's what we call the bow echo, where it kind of looks like a crossbow there. So not hard to see in this image where that bow echo is. Well, let's take a look at a deeper look at that storm setup. What happens in the thunderstorm? Well, there's updraft in the thunderstorm and there's downdraft in the thunderstorm. But typically that updraft is pretty strong and that's how you get the, that rising vertical motion in those clouds and thunderstorms to develop. Now, at the same time that downdraft is coming down, uh, whenever we're looking at the stronger events, you see a strong inflow of upper level winds that collides essentially with those downdrafts and that causes the air to rush to the surface. So it runs down and outward and that's how you see that gust going out ahead of the storm. Now keep in mind the air up there is much cooler than the air at the surface so whenever that rush of air comes down it's often cooler and it feels like a front has hit you and it's because technically the gust front has hit you it's that cooler air and it behaves just like a typical cold front does. Well we we told you before, whenever a cold front interacts with the warm front, you get lift. So that's how you get thunderstorms developing out ahead of the original thunderstorm. And whenever you have strong enough upper level winds, this process repeats. And it's almost like an endless supply of gasoline. Imagine if, hypothetically, you could drive down the interstate with a gas can inside of your gas tank just pouring gas so that you never run out. Well, sometimes you just never do. And that's exactly what happens with these thunderstorms. They will continue to go for miles and miles. And that's why we call this a derecho event. This area of wind damage is sustained for over 250 miles. And these little markers here indicate damage reports. And that happens frequently. It happened to me in my last TV market in Memphis. Um, and these wind gusts along that entire 250 mile path is at least 58 miles per hour. And sometimes you have some very, very strong wind gusts of upwards of 75 miles per hour, which is technically a category one hurricane wind gust. So very, very strong, very damaging. I know a lot of folks talk about tornadoes but uh, and hurricanes, but this event can be very, very damaging over a very wide swath of area. And the final thing we're going to talk about is just the likelihood of a derecho. Now, once again, I told you I moved here from Memphis and we're highlighted in that area where you can see technically a derecho event once a year. That's the Mid-South. That's the bullseye. The further that you get away from the Mid-South, the less likely it becomes, especially once you get closer to the East Coast. Still, we're in that area where we could see a derecho event at least once every two years. So something for us to stay mindful of, especially um, as we head into or well, we're finishing up the spring season. Remember, there's a second severe weather season that happens in the fall. And then, of course, you have thunderstorms that develop in the summer. So uh, we want you to be abreast of all of these different severe weather terms when you use them so that you yourself Yourself can be your own little junior meteorologist. Check this out. We have lots of episodes on YouTube. We also have links to them on our Facebook page. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions of other videos that we can do, feel free to comment below. Have a good day.